Today I'm going to be talking about chronic guilt, the chronic guilt cycle that we find ourselves in when suffering from harm OCD or various different OCD that gets into that cycle. Now, first of all, when we talk about different OCD themes, it's important to remember OCD themes aren't a type of OCD. All they are is just thoughts. If I'm scared of caterpillars, that's not caterpillar OCD. That's just a fear. That's just a thought I have and a fear in relation to caterpillars. That's not a different type of OCD. So that's really important to remember because otherwise what people do is they tend to think each thing is like some new theme. Oh my God, I hope I don't get that theme. And then they're on the back foot, hoping that they never get into that situation, hoping they never get stuck, hoping that they um, don't get that particular theme they've read about in, in a group or something. And they're like, oh my God, I really don't want to get POCD, for example. That's the worst. But anything that you're scared of getting, you're going to get because... If you're scared of it, the brain, it's like waving a red rag to a bull. That OCD is going to go, okay, that's the thing you're scared of, straight like a heat-seeking missile towards that. Maybe not immediately because it's got a grip on something else. And OCD does that. Often when it's got a grip on something else, it won't go to the other thing because it's, there's a grip currently on one thing that's got a good enough hold. Hence why sometimes when you're sick, you don't get bad OCD because you're already sick. So it's like, oh, the body's already being hit with that. We don't need to attack it. Don't think of OCD as a sort of separate being. But in terms of how it operates in the brain, it does feel like that. But often if you're sick or something else is like a big concern in life, it doesn't sort of come in to, to get to attack because something else has already got a hold. But when you're sick, sometimes you feel the worst physical anxiety and, 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 and worse because you're already, um, the body's already being sort of taxed and the nervous system's already under pressure. So it can come from various angles and it doesn't have to follow any particular rules. It can just move around as it pleases. Now, with chronic guilt, what's happening there is you've got those self-defeating beliefs like I don't believe to, to even be I don't deserve to even be alive for one second the sort of deservingness concept you can see is covered in detail in other videos and then it's then latching on and sort of self-defeating emotions you're the worst you're so terrible you don't even deserve to breathe you should just feel chronic torture for the rest of your life every second now this isn't explained in detail in I, I can't think of any uh, um, OCD books or videos that I see on other channels because it's very very specific it's very specific to, if you've had the experience, you'll understand what it's like. If you've recovered from the experience, you'll understand the sort of unraveling of how that sort of intertwined state that's in the mind, all locked up, operates. So that chronic guilt, when I used to wake up, the first second I used to wake up, you'd get like a second's relief because the brain hasn't realised yet that it's awake and conscious. Then bang in like a flight train, full speed smacks you straight away because you're you're um you're 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 instantly wanting to resist it you've instantly remembered the the the, the beliefs and the fear if i did xyz when i was 13 i don't deserve to even live bang and then it comes in and then you've got chronic guilt physical anxiety and then that's pushing you into the compulsive cycle of rumination and to try and get your way out of that cycle by disproving the thing from the past, which you'll never do, but it feels like a key that's one millimetre away from your fingertips to a lock in your mind that's going to bring everlasting peace, which doesn't exist, which is a bluff, which is a mirage, which is an illusion. So you're not going to do not chase that. I spent years 24-7 looking for that key in my head to no relief. Chronic guilt is going to operate like that. And as you work towards unconditional self-acceptance that you see covered in details in these videos and what is what I am focusing on every day with all the people I work on, work with uh, are in the one-to-one -one sessions and all the people that come to the webinars and we, we, we talk in detail all about acceptance and unraveling chronic guilt. You have to usually have a deeper level of acceptance to get out of that chronic guilt cycle uh, because you need to get under it at the roots. Now, that's not to say that you're getting more comfortable with uncertainty and fading out from the physical guilt and anxiety cycle. But you will find that as you stop fighting it and controlling it and trying to avoid it, that internal treading of water, it fades down. However, it tends to simmer like you're in some cortisol soup, as, I, as you often hear me say on this channel. Because underneath, and then to quote Korzybski, God may forgive your sins, but your nervous system won't. Not, a, not in relation to religion, but it's an old quote. Your nervous system, you know that... Ah, if that happened in the past, I can't forgive myself, that's unbearable, that's too scary, boom. So we need to deconstruct what's gone on in the past 
not by venturing endlessly into the past, but looking at your current beliefs in the now that are in relation to the past, so that baseline state of chronic guilt and anxiety fades out. And that is what is key with OCD recovery, usually in relation to harm OCD, chronic guilt, and so on. However, there is also usually a fear of fear element at play, where the individual is very scared of being stuck in that cycle endlessly, and also remembers the strength of the emotions of anxiety and physical guilt for so long that they are very, very scared of being in that position forever or it returning as it once did in the early days of the really strong struggle, for example, or recent strong setback. So you need to be aware of fear of fear. You need to get used to wearing it like an uncomfortable coat, as the anxiety pioneer Claire Weeks once said, and is so true today, that you need to wear it like an uncomfortable coat and learn to float in that physical anxiety sea so that you are learning to rest rather than tread water a thousand miles an hour as you desperately fight against OCD and anxiety, which is like pouring petrol on a bonfire to put it out. These are all key components of recovery from chronic anxiety and chronic guilt. The same as they are recovery components for chronic insomnia, where the individual is scared of being stuck in a sleepless state and therefore being tired in the day and it affects their day-to-day -day quality of life and happiness and so on. All of these individual problems have the same components driving them at the core. So that is vital to remember. In my career, for the last 13 to 14 years, I've worked with probably around 20 to 30,000 people suffering with generalized anxiety disorder, OCD, and all other ranging variations of anxiety disorders and uh, fears. You are all in the same situation where beliefs are concerned. The physical anxiety component, the genetic variation is irrelevant. It is the core base the belief system that is fueling all of the problems. You look at your beliefs, you change your perspectives to a more rational alternative away from the irrational, non-scientific, catastrophizing zero to 100 way that's fueling chronic anxiety. You do that, you do that with insomnia, you do that with generalized anxiety disorder, strong physical anxiety, harm OCD, POCD, HOCD, ROCD, everything and you return back to a baseline state of peace. But do not expect that to happen in an instant. Your nerves have been sensitized for a long time. The nerves have fired up. They have been for a very long time. It takes a while for the nervous system to get back to that baseline state of peace because it has been on guard to keep you alive. It's a threat response to fight or flight to keep you alive. And all those nerves are on guard, waiting, and you are very sensitized to them. Pains in the arms, palpitations, headaches, uh, tension in your back, the stomach aches, uh, the knot in your stomach, shortness of breath, all of this. And it's become habitual. So it will take a while for these habits to unravel and you return back to that baseline state of peace. You can recover. You are not broken. There is hope. You have got to take it one day at a time. You have to work, be proactive, be persistent, and you can get there. You can come in and see us for one-to-one -one sessions. We work with pretty much every country in the world. People come to us from Navy bases in the sea, uh, from loads of countries that don't speak English, where we have translation services for most countries, where we can speak to you for most time zones. Uh, and we can work with you specifically on your fears and work out how to help you to get out of that chronic guilt and anxiety state that you are finding yourself in currently. Uh, and we also cover that in detail in our webinars. Uh, if you'd like more information about that, email info at ocdrecovery.com and we will get back to you today. Take it one day at a time, focus on recovery, go for it, you've got one life, seize this life, but at the same time, bring anxiety for the ride. Let it take as long as it takes whilst deconstructing the irrational beliefs that are maintaining the chronic anxiety and chronic guilt cycle. There is only a fear cycle there. Once the fear cycle has gone, you return to a baseline of peace. Once you get more comfortable with anxiety and physical discomfort, 
it fades down, it fades down. Not fully until you come under the beliefs. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you may be triggered and you may feel physical anxiety and you leave it there and it passes. Sometimes you may go with uncertainty and it will pass. But if you have been locked on 24-7 for years and you have done countless mindfulness, countless yoga, countless, um, countless uh, bringing it for the ride, and it hasn't gone, we need to de deconstruct the anxious cycle, the guilt cycle that is persisting keeping you in that stuck state. One day at a time, go for it, you can recover.